Listener discretion is advised. Oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) Hey everyone, welcome back to the I Should Totally Be Dead Right Now podcast. We tell true stories of survivors of true crime, natural disasters, and everything else in between. And today is a special episode because it is Michelle's birthday episode. And the Halloween episode, which is my favorite episode of the entire year. That's right. I don't have a story this year, though. It's okay. Because Caitlin's got a long one. I have a long one, and it's paranormal, so... Hell yeah! Oh my god, I'm so excited for your story. In honor of Michelle's birthday and Halloween... We got to kick it uh, paranormal this time. That's right. Um, paranormal style. Ooh, ooh. Are you excited for your birthday? No. Oh. Am I excited for this story? Yes. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Bitch, I'm turning 44. How can I be excited? That's like, I feel like, no offense, it's like a, like a, like a nothing age. Like, that's not what I'm... No, that's it's exactly like, that's correct. A... It's like, not anything, it's not your 18th birthday, it's not your 21st birthday, it's not your 30th, it's not your 40th, it's not your 50th. Yeah, it's just... It's, it's not, not even, even your 45th. fucking 45th yeah, birthday. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, it's... it's Look, it's, 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 uh, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Have you but, watched uh, that episode of What We Do in the Shadows yet? No. Girl. Oh, I'm sorry. It's hilarious. I'll get there. She's like, his name was Gregor, and he was like this very impressive man, but now he's been reincarnated into a man named Jeff, and she's like, it's like, eh, eh, Jeff. <laughs> That's funny. So, that uh, has been our new, our new go-to saying, is it? it's like, eh, eh. Jeff, whenever you have some sort of disappointing thing happen to That's you. That's pretty funny. I like that. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> the drink? The drink. We had Bloody Shirley's. I know. Can you say it in that super creepy voice that you said oh, it yeah. earlier? Was... It was like, Bloody Shirley's. <laughs> I don't know what you did. I don't know why. I'm a little odd. Because, yeah, I was just taking the picture and I just said, I don't know. I was like, Bloody Shirley's. <laughs> I don't know why. It was though. creepy as shit. It was weird. You nailed it. It it doesn't have the same effect when you're when cold ha- turkey. You yeah, know? I make you recreate it. Yeah. Say it again, Caitlin. Say it again. <laughs> no, so we had Bloody Shirley's, and pretty much it's just a alcoholic uh, Shirley Temple. Well, it's super easy. Well, we added peach schnapps because we love the taste of peach, so I recommend it because it gives it a different taste. So It's what delightful it is, is what it is. So it is... Let's just say a shot of vodka, a Ish. half sh- yeah. <laughs> a half shot of peach schnapps. Ish. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Michelle. <laughs> uh, fill it with a Seven Up or Sprite or Sierra Mist, like a lemon lime soda. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we had cute little syringes, and we did like a shot of grenadine in it, which turned out really cute. I thought it did. It turned out awesome. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, th- and then we it. drank the crap out of them. Yeah. It's very simple, very easy, and very tasty. So, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. And now we actually have glasses of Five Farms yeah. that we're drinking. We're done with the damn shot glasses. Yeah. We can't be done with them. We have got full glasses. We got, well, yeah. the we, get, we got sippers. It's like a third of a glass. So, yeah. it's, it's very elegant looking. I feel very fancy. I do feel fancy. Right? Like, I'm drinking a whiskey. Yeah. But, in fact, it's not whiskey at all. Farms. It's, it has whiskey in it, so. Fuck you, Five Farms. Once again, Once you're again, amazing. Thank you, Five Farms. All right, here we All go. All right. So, no story for me, no. but Caitlin's got a long one. I got a long one. Paranormal, oh. and Michelle will, I'm sure. Have a lot <laughs> to fucking say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. All right. Woo woo. So, this story is about the Ammons family. Ammons family, okay. A M M O N S. Not Adam's family. Not Adam's family. <laughs> Close uh, <laughs> it is November in 2011. Okay. And the family moves into a rental house in uh, on Carolina Street in Gary. Gary, Indi- Indiana? I think so, is yeah. That, that sure. sounds right. Okay, let's yeah. just roll with it. So, it's great. You know, November. Cool. Great. New house. Yeah, we're, Exciting. We just moved past Halloween. Yeah. Halloween. And uh, rolling into Thanksgiving. Do yeah. you know that, like, oh my God. Christmas already? is not that far away? Yes, already. <laughs> I already found your Christmas present. <sighs> Goddamn, Caitlin. I know. Your presents are the best. Thank you. I try. She... Okay, so I just got some birthday presents from Caitlin before we started this okay. podcast. Yeah. And it's clear she knows me <laughs> too fucking well. <laughs> 
she bought me a bunch of rolling papers, yeah. a bunch of like tips for your joints, and Heck a fucking yeah. like perfect little ashtray with a lid on it. Oh, <sighs> I do. It's amazing. And five farms. And five farms. And then you have something else coming, but it hasn't come yet. <gasps> Who even cares? It's probably like the piece de la resistance. It's not. <laughs> no, it's just a cute little thing, but. Okay, uh, back to the Ammons family and their rental okay. in Gary, Indiana. So in December, big black flies suddenly swarmed their screened porch. Yeah. Thinking it was like a normal thing, they killed the flies, but then they came back. So they killed them again, but then they came back. And yeah. despite, and it was winter time, so it was really cold outside. So they didn't think, like, they should They're like, not what be the here. hell? Why are we having so many fly issues? Exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. So everyone living in the house is, so we have mom. So there's no names except for one. So the Ammons mm. family consists of mom and three kids. Okay, no dad. No dad. Single mom. Single mom with a 12-year-old daughter, a 9-year-old son, and a 7-year-old son. Okay. 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 And then her mom, which her name is Rosa, so we do know the mom's name is Rosa. Okay. So they all live together. But then other things started to happen, and after midnight, uh, the mom and Rosa would occasionally hear a steady, like, clumps of footprints like climbing the basement stairs and oh clump- so she's like just continually hearing like clump, clump, yeah clump, like coming up the stairs of the basement stairs Ugh. yes and then creak and then the creak of the door opening between the basement and the kitchen and oh my god caitlin did you do this story just for me because yeah. i have fucking basement stairs from my kitchen yeah that's exactly <sighs> what i'm hoping for i will say oh that i yeah you're in for it, Caitlin. I don't have a story, so I'm going to say a lot. <laughs> no, every time, like at night, mm-hmm. when I climb up the basement stairs, because a lot of times I have to go downstairs because that's where our washer and dryer right. is and stuff, and uh-huh. go down to the basement, and it's fine during the day. Mm-hmm. But at night, when something I'm walking it. up those stairs, all I can think of is something like pulling me from the darkness. Oh. Do you know what I mean? No, absolutely. Like, it's going to grab my ankles or clap like the conjuring or something. Well, that's how I feel thing. like when I'm turning off the lights to go to bed. Like, I feel like like once I turn off the light, something's behind me. I have to go to the, you know, I just have to <sighs> quicken my steps, you know. Anyway, so even though they locked the door, they could still he- hear the door opening. Okay, so they're locking the door between the kitchen and the basement. Yeah, but they could still hear it opening. Okay, so they're hearing the clumps up the stairs mm-hmm. and the door opening despite it being locked. Exactly. I want to kill myself already. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay. Rosa, the mom, the mom of the mom. Okay, Rosa, sorry. Woke up one night to see a shadowy figure of a man pacing in the living room. Oh, girl, I have <laughs> goosebumps immediately as well, soon as she said that. She went to investigate, and what she found was large, wet footprints where what? he was pacing. Mm-hmm. So there was physical evidence of him having been there. Mm hmm. So this kind of activity, just the minor, like the footprints, the the sounds, the doors opening, this happens for a few months. But then March 10th of 2012, things start to escalate quickly. Escalate Uh, quickly. Wow, girl. Escalate quickly. Thank you. There it is. Escalate quickly. Mm. (laughs) Yeah, it's those damn bloody (laughs) Shirley's. It is... 2 a.m. and the family are all awake with a group of friends who are mourning a recent death of a loved one. Oh, so they're, so they're all... kind of together yeah. to chat and be with each other and exactly what you do after a death. Correct. <laughs> uh... Good one, Michelle. Thank you for that. <laughs> but all of a sudden, there are screams coming from the bedrooms. So everyone gets up and rushed to see what was happening. The 12-year-old daughter was levitating above the bed, but she was unconscious. She what? was just levitating. Everyone surrounds her and starts to pray. Eventually, she starts to descend onto the bed, waking up, not remembering what just happened. The group of friends visiting left and refused to come back to the house. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> that's Joel and I. Oh, uh, we're not going back there. <laughs> Poor little Evie back there was <laughs> fucking 10 feet off the bed. Right? Hard pass for us. So it's Rosa, more like four feet. I don't know. <laughs> Rosa tells her daughter, "We need help. 
we need to talk to someone who knows how to deal with this. <sighs> they didn't know what it was, but it definitely thought it was supernatural, which is... So did the daughter remember anything? No, I just said she didn't remember anything. I heard she that. Was... <laughs> I just said that. Fuck yourself, Caitlin. Go on. Happy birthday. Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> they called local churches, but no one would listen to them. Officials at one church visited the house and said, yes, there's spirits in this house. They're very prevalent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they recommend the family clean the home with bleach and an ammonia, then use oil to draw crosses on every door and window. The family also poured olive oil on the three children's hands and feet and then smeared oil in the shape of a cross on their foreheads. Oh, my. I know. Okay. They also talked to clairvoyants who said that the home was besieged with more than 200 demons and said that the best thing to do is move. 200 motherfucking demons? Demons, man. Not even That's ghosts. Good. I know. It's like, you know what? I'm going to be out. <laughs> right? <laughs> I will, in fact, move. That sounds amazing. But the family could not move because they didn't have the money. Because it's the USA. Yes. <laughs> that sounds correct. Because it costs a bill. Oh. It costs a bazillion dollars to move. Pretty much. So they tried everything such as uh, burning sage and sulfur throughout the house. Drew crosses with smoke. And they even had an altar in the basement with a statue of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus on it. Okay, so they're like really just hitting all the check boxes. Exactly. Oh god, check boxes. Then all was quiet for 3 days. They were probably like, "Yay, we did <laughs> yeah. it." Good job, guys. No more levitating. Right? So things even escalated more after these 3 days because the family said demons possessed their bodies, like the not Rosa, Ugh. but the the Ammons, the three kids, the mom, the three kids, yeah. And... The kids' eyes bulged, evil, and had evil smiles, and their voice deepened every time it happened. Like they were oh, instances. Oh, that's creepy as hell. Yeah, the mom felt weak, lightheaded, and warm when she was possessed, as she said. Her body shook, and she felt out of control. I do honestly believe in possessions. I think that they can happen. I think that's what happened with Dear David. Okay. <laughs> and I just, like, I think there's things that can suck onto you. And, I mean, not necessarily take over your body, yeah. but definitely leech your energy. I think and... leech, the thing with me, I don't know. Like, I definitely believe in paranormal, for sure. Yeah. But the possession thing, I'm a little... Like, eh. Yeah, I mean, I used to watch a show. I think it's called, like, Most Haunted. And this guy would get... They would go to a haunted place, and he would get possessed every single time. And I'm like, bro. Whatever, exactly. dude. <laughs> that, that's kind of... I feel like... I, I don't know. It could have been true. I don't know. But I felt like it was very... It's TV, you know? Yeah. So I... So when it comes to possessions, I'm just like a little on the... On the skeptic on the side. side. But... Let's listen on. Oh, let is. <laughs> Let's listen on. I will say I watch a lot of the Dead Files, mm. um, and those are all ghost stories and stuff. And yeah. the chick who goes in, who's like the clairvoyant, yeah, she's always feeling whatever they're feeling. So oh, okay. she'll feel nauseous. Well, or, that's different. Like I feel. if they had a e head injury, she yeah. would have a headache and that type of thing. No, this guy would be like channeling them, and he'd be talking for them every single time. No. And I'm like, she mm. does do that occasionally. It's a little creepy. All right, well. It's like. Rah, 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 rah. Just like that? Yeah, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> verbatim. <laughs> so the seven-year-old would sit in the closet talking to a boy that no one else could see. Oh, fuck that. The nine-year-old would describe what he felt was like to be killed. So he <gasps> could, I don't know, he was describing like how it was like to be dead or like to be perhaps killed. he had... The whatever was possessing him maybe had experienced that, yeah. and so he was expressing that. Yeah. Which, wow. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy for, I mean, a nine-year-old? Wow. Yeah. The seven-year-old was thrown from a bathroom, and the 12-year-old was hit in the head with a headboard and even caused her to get stitches oh. in her head. Dang. The 12-year-old told mental health professionals that sometimes she felt like she was being choked and also held down so that she couldn't speak or move. Ugh. 
She also heard a voice say that she would never see her family again and wouldn't live another 20 minutes. Oh my god. I know! <laughs> like, not even 24 hours, no. fucking 20 minutes. Yeah, that's all you got, girl. Oh. It got so bad that they would stay at hotel rooms. Like, they oh. had to get out of the house. Poor things. I mean, Seven-year-old's being tossed. Nine-year-old knows what it's like to be killed. A 12-year-old got hit in the head to get stitches. Like, Yeah, geez. that's pretty intense. Yeah. Especially after you thought maybe you had beat it. Right. You know. It was those, quiet for three days and then bye. Yeah, those guys were like, ha, ha, ha. We're going to yeah. give them a sense of calm. Yeah. And we don't mean it. The calm before the storm. That's, mm. Mm. Yeah, well put, Caitlin. In desperation, the mom reached out to their family physician, Dr. Jeffrey. Dr. Jeffrey. Dr. Jeffrey. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm so sorry. Attempt it. On April 19th, 2012. Dr. Jeffrey O. Yeah. Okay, Dr. O. We'll call him yeah. Dr. O. Dr. O thought it was bizarre, and after 22 years, he's never heard anything like this. So he didn't immediately discount them. He was like, you bitches are crazy. Get out. In his mental notes <laughs> about the visit, he wrote delusions of ghosts in the home and hallucinations. So okay, he did so think, yes, yeah. he did think that a little bit. So DCS, which is Department was it? of Community, Community Services, Services yeah. maybe, we think. Also visited the home, and the following is a report of the family case's manager uh, interviews with the medical staff. Like okay, the, so they had a essentially uh, a worker come in and interview them. Yep. Is that okay? Yep, and they took a report. And then chaos erupted. While the person was there? Yeah. <laughs> the nine-year-old cursed Dr. O in a demonic voice, raging at him. He was lifted and thrown into a wall with nobody touching him. <laughs> Both boys would... Abruptly pass out and wouldn't come to. Rosa and the mom would hold each one. They called 911 and seven or eight police officers and multiple ambulances showed up. Everyone was confused on what was happening and going on. They took the boys to the hospital. Dang. The boys woke up and the nine-year-old acted rationally, but the seven-year-old screamed and thrashed and it took five men to hold the seven-year-old down. Oh, shoot. Like, I should be able to hold a seven-year-old down. I would think I By could. myself. Yeah. Like, no, five that. men had to So there in. was some, a little power behind there was this a little, power little behind seven-year-old it. body. But that happened when... <laughs> when everyone was there, there to witness yeah. it. A caller <sighs> called DCS and speculated that the mom might have a mental illness and believed the children were performing for her and she was encouraging their behavior whatever like whatever i can't even <laughs> no i don't think that's what's happening dcs family case manager valerie washington was to handle the investigation the following is her account to police and her intake officer's report all right let's hear it hospital personnel examined the family and found them to be healthy and free of marks and bruises Okay. Uh, a hospital psychiatrist evaluated the mom and determined she was sound mind. While Valerie was talking to a uh, mom, the seven-year-old started growling with his teeth showing and his eyes rolled to the back of his head. Oh, that's not creepy. <laughs> he locked his hands around the nine-year-old's neck and refused to let go until they pried him off. So he was choking his brother. Mm, I'm assuming mom wasn't like... Go check your brother. <laughs> no. We got this lady in here. We need to give her a show. Val I think not. Yeah, right? <laughs> Valerie and a registered nurse, Willie Lee Walker, brought the two boys into a small exam room for an interview with Rosa. Okay. Oh, with Rosa? Yep. Rosa's there now. Okay. So mom's there. Valerie's there. No. So now... Once the choking after the choking, they took the seven-year-old and the nine-year-old and Rosa. So mom's not in the room now. Maybe I'm confused at who's Rosa. Rosa is the mom's mom. Oh, yeah. I thought it was mom this whole time. No, 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 no. Mom is the mom okay. of three kids. Rosa's grandma. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. That's my own mistake. Okay. Rosa so is grandma, grandma and two grandkids and Valerie are all in a room three together. Three grandkids. Oh, yes. Okay. Two grandkids are in a room together. Yes. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Everyone, wow, sorry if you followed that. My apologies. The seven-year-old stared into their brother's eyes and began to growl again. Ugh. 
He said, it's time to die. I will kill you. Just like that. That doesn't well, sound good. <laughs> while he was saying that, the nine-year-old started to headbutt Rosa in the stomach. Oh, so my God. So a lot God. of chaos is happening. <laughs> yeah. Rosa grabbed the nine-year-old's hand and started to pray. I just love you so much. You're forgiven. That's not a prayer. That's my prayer. Oh, okay. That's what I say to poor little Merlin. My little <laughs> mom's dog. dog. Not even my dog. Valerie and Willie then witnessed the nine-year-old having a weird grin. And he walked backward up the wall to the no, ceiling. No. Fuck that. That's a hard MRF and pass. Are you kidding me? He walked backward up the wall to the ceiling and then flipped nope. over Rosa, landing backwards on his feet and never letting go of her hands. So he's holding her hand. Like, she grabbed nope. his hands and he started walking backwards up the wall, went all the way around pretty much. I the would be like, well, grandbabies, <laughs> we had a good run. It's time to let you go now. Right. <laughs> Police asked Valerie if he was doing, like, an acrobatic trick, and Valerie said no. He <laughs> glided backward on the floor and ceiling like nothing. Could you even imagine no. being in that MRF in room when no. that happened? Absolutely not. Your days of an, as an advocate would be over. <laughs> I already think kids are creepy. And it's like, <laughs> I'm <just kidding>. Agreed. <laughs> Valerie. That would be, I'm sorry, yeah, that yeah. would be so terrifying. I know! I can't even imagine how scary that would be to watch. I, absolutely, right? You, you know it's not something that they've, like, practiced before or some crazy shit. No, exactly, shit and, yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Even, okay. like, even like a deepened voice. Like, I can try to deepen my voice, but it's only so much I can do, you know? So it's like... I know, my voice isn't that creepy. I, I try. <laughs> well... Uh, <laughs> Valerie told police she was scared when it happened and ran out of the room afterwards. Yeah, hi, Valerie. You and me are the same person, as it seems. <laughs> Willie, the nurse, followed right after her. <laughs> nah, <laughs> yeah. I'm out. He said, we didn't know what was going on. That was crazy. I was like, everybody gotta go. We just know some creepy shit happened yeah. just now, and it was the worst. Valerie told this to Dr. O., but he did not believe them <laughs> and asked the, asked the boy to walk up the wall again. He's Can like, hey. Do that again. Yeah. Willie, the nurse, uh, told him that he doubted that he could do that again because he was not himself when he did it. The boy said he did not remember doing any of that. Of course not. Right? Of course not. Then <sighs> the mom, not Rosa, mom, spent the night at the hospital with the seven-year-old while Rosa took the 12-year-old and the nine-year-old to a relative's home. Yeah, hard pass. I'd be like, sorry, kids. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The next day was actually the seven-year-old's birthday, so he's now eight. So they're going to have a little party for him? Well, DCS officials asked Rosa to bring the children back to the hospital to talk more about what had happened. The family came and celebrating his birthday, and they sang and had a little miniature cake for him. Oh, that was very nice. Something. Another miniature cake for the demon that possesses him <laughs> as well. Two little ones. <laughs> bum, bum. One's Two blue, cakes. one's black. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go. Oh my God. After the festivities, DCS told the mom that the children would not be going home with her. <gasps> DCS took emergency step and they took custody of the children without a court order. Oh, that's very upsetting. I know. All the children were experiencing spiritual and emotional distress. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> and now being taken away from your parents and grandparents, like, yeah. forget it. Emotions were high and the mom states, we'd already been through so much and fought so hard for our lives. It was, ab it was obvious we were a team. And we were beating it, whatever we were fighting. We made it through together as a team, and they separated us. Oh, Sad. this story just got hella heartbreaking. Now it's April 22nd, 2012. Okay. And now there's Reverend Michael was leading a Bible study when a call from a hospital chaplain asked him to perform an exorcism on the nine-year-old. Okay, so they're like, he's in a foster home now, and it yeah. has the same behavior. 
Pretty much. Yeah. He had never received a request like this before and agreed to interview the family a few days later. So it's now <sighs> April 22nd, 2012, and he talked with the mom and Rosa for two hours as they told him everything that has happened. So this has been going on for, like, almost a full year. No, no, no. Th- they moved in November of 2011. Okay, so six months. Six months. Okay. So all this is happening within six months, which wow. is crazy fast. Like... Rosa had to stop the interview as the bathroom light was flickering and the flickering would not stop. Oh, sorry. Where the ghost is like, come in here. I need to have a chat with you. Quit. Morse code. Yeah. No, the flickering would stop every time Michael went over to investigate. He said, (laughs) it must be scared of me, he said. Uh, Then the blinds in the kitchen started to swing, and Michael saw wet footprints in the living room. Oh, those original Mm -hmm. footprints. That would be my worst fear. Like, I have read a lot of Halloween stories up at this point, Mm -hmm. but a lot of them had included, like, uh, flour, where they'd, like, put it all over the floor and put it everywhere, and then there'd be footprints. Like, in the flower. Oh, yeah. And so it's probably something similar. Oh, yeah. that'd be so scary. The mom complained of a headache, and Michael put a cross on her forehead, and she started to convulse. Oh, God, because she's That's, possessed, too, now. Yeah. Now it's been four hours, and Michael believed the family was being tormented by demons. Yeah. Michael blessed the home before he left. He told the mom and Rosa to leave as well, because it's not safe in that home. And this is their poor little rental. I know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're just trying to get by. So they went to a relative's house. Less than a week later, Valerie went back to the house, that DCS worker. Oh, of course, Valerie, Valerie yes. You know. Yeah. Um, and a Lake County police officer to check on the condition of the home. Okay, make sure it wasn't like a rat-infested exactly. place or something like that. Two more officers came out for a professional courtesy. Okay. Oh, no, for out of professional curiosity. Okay. They were, uh... They're just checking things out. They want to see if, in fact, demons are well, there. The, these reports are crazy, you yeah. know? That's being I would down. probably want to see two until I'm possessed by a demon, and I'd be all pissed off that yeah. I wanted to go see them. Well, the mom refused to go inside, but Rosa said that she would accompany them inside. Oh, Grandma, you're the best. Directly under the stairs... So in the basement under, like, when you go down the stairs, directly. Okay, so the creepiest part of the entire house. That's where you're referring yeah. to. I, I think that's what they're talking about in the under basement. Under the basement stairs. Yeah. yeah. There was a dirt floor, and Rosa told them that demons seemed to emanate from beneath the stairs. Yeah, agreed. During the interview with Rosa, the officer's audio recorders malfunctioned, and the batteries drained, even though they've put fresh ones right before Mm -hmm. interview. Mm -hmm. It's a (laughs) damn demon. Another officer played back the interview and heard an unknown voice say, hey. Yeah. (laughs) I'll kill you. (laughs) That's what it's saying. I'll possess all of your children. (laughs) They took pictures throughout the house, and one photo of the basement stairs had a cloudy white image in the upper right-hand corner. (laughs) I don't want any video evidence of any shit like this. That's scary. And when enlarged, it looked like a face. (laughs) (laughs) Another image also seemed to look like a silhouette of a woman and other strange silhouettes throughout the house. Ugh. That's scary. Exactly. Now, everyone is starting to believe the Ammons' claims, except the mental health professions that were evaluating the family. Okay, so they were hanging out to be a-holes, is kind of what it sounds like. They interviewed the now eight-year-old and believed he did not suffer from a true psychotic disorder. So... No, probably not, because he was probably a perfectly normal kid with a poor little demon inside of him. (laughs) (sighs) I maybe shouldn't say poor little demon. It's probably an a-hole demon. Probably. And it's a poor little kid. Yeah. The 12-year-old said she saw shadowy figures and twice went into trances. Ugh. Doors would slam and stuff started to move around. The whole family continued to insist that they were possessed by demons. Ugh. DCS set goals for the family. One of them stipulated that the children... Uh, don't be upset or possessed by demons, yeah. number one. That the children not discuss demons and being possessed and take responsibility for their actions. What the F ever? 
Now I'm getting angry. <laughs> they also needed to participate in therapy and address past behavior. I'd be so pissed if I was, obs- like, possessed. I keep wanting to say obsessed by a demon. Well, That's obsessed. probably more accurate. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> no, possessed, like... You're living your life. Yeah. You've done some crazy stuff because of this dumb demon. Yeah. And now you're getting blamed for it. You got to do your own community service. Yeah. Hard pass. Well, at least DCS cre- uh, credited the mom for sharing a close bond with her children, but she needed to use alternate forms of discipline, not directly related to religion and demon possession. Oh my God. <laughs> you know who would lose their... Em- like, their ever-loving mind, it's yeah. me. Yeah. I'd be so pissed. <sighs> she could work on those goals during supervised visits with the kids. Oh, well, she doesn't have exactly. custody of them. Mm-hmm. Oh, that just makes this whole thing more heartbreaking. The mom was working on those meetings. DCS and police continued to investigate the strange happenings in the house. The mom, Rosa, and three police officers from the first time went back to the house. Uh. It was the afternoon of May 10th, 2012. Michael also came, the Reverend Michael, mm. uh, came as well, along with two more officers with a dog and DCS case manager, Samantha. Oh my God, the dog's going to save it all. The dog's going to bark <laughs> at some weird corner and be like, well, we should have taken him seriously the entire time. Well, Samantha took over Valerie's spot because she didn't want to go back to the house. <laughs> <laughs> Valerie's like, hell nah, <laughs> I'm good. The dog checked out the house but had no interest, so everyone went to the basement. Whatever, Caitlin. <laughs> Samantha touched a strange liquid that was dripping from the wall. Ugh. She said it felt slippery yet sticky. Ugh. Michael wanted to check the dirt below the stairs to see if there was a pentagram or a, cor- a cursed object or a portal or, to hell. Or fucking demons just rolling up out of this yeah, like little graveyard hell. underneath the stairs. One officer dug a four foot by three foot hole beneath the stairs. They found a... Pink- that he was never seen from again. <laughs> <laughs> they found a pink press on nail... Oh. A white pair of panties, a political shirt pin, and a lid for a small cooking pan, socks with the bottoms cut off of below the ankles, candy wrappers, and a heavy metal object that looked like a weight from a draping cord. What the F, Caitlin? <laughs> that is not what I expected at all. <laughs> so they replaced the dirt and... And kept uh, all the items, raked I'm over, presuming. Yeah, yeah, and raked over it. And Michael blessed uh, with it with some salt, which he said is a barrier to evil and spread it under the stairs and throughout the basement. Okay. That would probably be something I would do. You always see that in movies where yeah, they're salt. always put salt around them and then yeah. nothing can get them inside the salt circle. Mm-hmm. All right. Samantha was later standing in the living room when her left pinky started to tingle. And whiten and complained it felt broken. So her pinky like yeah. got all effed up and started feeling broken. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Less than 10 minutes later, she felt as if she was having a panic attack. She couldn't breathe. She had to go outside and wait for the others. And hopefully an apology letter <laughs> to Valerie. The mom joined her outside when she started to get a headache and a shoulder pain. Hmm. You got a ghost massaging you. It's okay, girl. Let's have some some eye contact as I massage you. <laughs> One of the police officers who has who has been like shot at, investigated murders, armed robberies, and over thirty years on the force was like, not staying in that house after dark. He's like, that was the scariest thing I've ever yeah. encountered. They all they also noticed an oil like substance dripping from the blinds. And could not find the source of where it was coming from. Oh, gross. The thing is, Caitlin, you were describing like 90% of the shit that happens in my house. Like, currently. (laughs) Great. You got some oil dripping from your blinds, girl? No, but we have some like weird like drips of liquid that we can't figure out where exactly they're coming from. It's a demon. Well, now I think that. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, maybe it's a weird pipe, but no. No. (sighs) To make sure Rosa or the mom did not did not do that themselves, like, you know. Oh, like they didn't put the oil yeah. or the weird liquid on the they, blinds? Yeah. They used paper towels to wipe it up and then seal the room for 25 minutes and then 
checked back on it and the oil was back. Oh, so it was, not so it was actively mm-hmm. dripping and being gross and weird. Michael, Reverend, Reverend Michael. <laughs> Nicely said, Caitlin. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> said that the liquid was a manifestation of a paranormal or de- demonic <gasps> Ectoplasm! That's what it is! It's freaking ectoplasm! I've seen <laughs> Ghostbusters. And after that, I asked Bishop Dale uh, permission to perform an exorcism. Yeah. Yeah. So the bishop had never authorized an exorcism in 21 years and denied the request and told him to find another priest who had... More experience had, in exorcisms? Yeah, who has, uh, who has performed an exorcism before. Okay. So Michael did an intense blessing, which did not need the church's approval, hmm. as well as a minor exorcism of the mom. So oh, all, okay. So he did his little own yeah. on the DL type mm-hmm. thing. Okay. It consisted of prayers, statements, and appeals to cast out demons. Get out of here, demons! <sighs> exactly like that. Two police officers. <laughs> Thank you, Caitlin. <laughs> two police officers, Samantha and the DCS family case manager, attended the ritual. Okay, so they got a crowd in there. Yeah. Samantha left believing something was going on. Not to say it was demonic, but she something got the, she got happened the chills. weird is yeah. going on. She got the chills. Saying, we felt like someone was in the room with you, breathing down your neck. <gasps> Samantha said. Samantha had a string of medical problems after visiting the home. Oh. One week after she uh, left the house, she got third degree burns from a motorcycle. And within 30 days, she had broken three ribs, jet skiing, broken a hand when she hit a table, and then broken ankle running in flip flops. Well, okay. In my research of trying to find a Halloween story, <laughs> even okay. though I did not yeah. actually find one. <laughs> Um, I read a lot about situations like that mm. where they come in contact with yeah. sort of some sort of evil entity. Yeah. And then all kinds of crazy bad yeah. stuff happens right after that. Well, just like Annabelle's a doll, you know, oh, yes. that guy and his girlfriend came and he mocked her, said like, hey, do something, you know, F you. And then on his way home, he crashed and died. Mm. Isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. I just don't fuck with that. No, don't Do not fuck mess with that. With indeed. <laughs> Ugh. So, Reverend Michael told the mom to look up the names of demons that were tormenting her. A name has power, and they plan to use those names to fight against the demons during the exorcism. <gasps> oh. This is like The Conjuring 2 all over again. Right? Because didn't she have to find the name to the demon? Yeah, and she wrote it in the Bible. Spoiler. Yeah. Uh, I know. Sorry. Sorry, sorry guys. <laughs> the... It's terrifying as hell. Like, just skip it. <laughs> well, with a little Google search uh, of the problems that the family had been going through, and one name was... I Belie- like. I don't even know if I wanted to say it. Sorry, I'm going to say it. Well, I'm going to say it Don't wrong. say it three times. You like Beetlejuice? Sit- yeah, okay. like Beetlejuice. Well, this one is Be- Belize bulb. Oh, Belize bulb? Yeah. I've, I've heard that. I, I've heard that. Now too. we've said it twice. You can't say it again. Be- no! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, look at the mic. <laughs> Spiked it, girl. Because uh, I don't want to be possessed. Well, this demon was the Lord of the Flies. And a new. Neighbor- oh, the flies yeah. in the beginning! Oh! Mm-hmm. <gasps> It's coming all together. Uh, And then another name of a demon that torture and hurt kids and other high-ranking demons that were assigned, including sergeants. I mean, they were high-level ranked demons, pretty much. I see. So there's like a whole hierarchy to demon culture, if you will. (laughs) So the bishop actually changed his mind and gave Michael the green light to perform an exorcism on the Ammons family. Wow. Reverend Michael ultimately performed three major exorcisms on the Ammons. It was a one on each kid, or I don't know, but two were in English, and the last one was in Latin. Oh, he's going old school. Yeah. And this was in June of 2012 at the church. Wow. The Ammons convulsed, and the two police officers that were there, like from the previous, they came to help. And they're like, yeah, this is scary and we don't love it. (laughs) The mom says she felt as if something inside her was trying to hold on and inflict pain at the same time. It was a different kind of pain next to natural, like it was next to like a natural pain, but Mm. it was intense like childbirth. 
Oh, wow. Like something's clawing on the inside of her. Then the mom fell asleep, which is the demon's way of lessening the ritual's effect. So it's like trying to be like, let's pause it. Oh, I see. Let's put her ass to sleep so she can't be conscious for all of this. And then I can go ahead and stay in her body. Exactly. Got it. Okay. The mom and Rosa moved to Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Thank you. Indianapolis. I'm not even going to try. But drove Moved back. to a different town in Indiana. <laughs> yeah. But drove back for the exorcisms and court hearings for the kids. You know. Oh, God. I know. This is so heartbreaking. I because know. Because they just wanted help. And she ended up losing her kids. I know. So, oh. Reverend Michael blessed the new home to prevent any more problems to happen. This poor rental house. <laughs> it's never getting rented again. Well, in the final exorcism at the end of June of 2012, Ugh. this is less than a year. Yeah. Like, this is all happening. It seems to me like this has been going on for 20 years. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I guess it's only been like There's seven months. months. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I don't mean to laugh. <laughs> Reverend Michael prayed and berated the demons in Latin. <laughs> He's talking shit in Latin. Yeah. Yes. This would be the last time the mom saw Michael and drove back uh, to her new house where they now live without fear. Oh, okay. So the exorcism was successful. Yeah. Then. It took three. I thought you were going to be like, well, these damn yeah. demons drove out Reverend Michael <laughs> yeah. and we never saw him again. No, it took three full uh, exorcisms and the Ammons old home became an object of local curiosity yeah, so bet. much that the owner of the house had to call to ask officers to stop driving by the house because they're scaring the new tenants because <laughs> they kept driving back so much there was no more incidents at that house with the new tenants okay yeah. so they ended up kind of clearing it yeah then, it sounds like so November Set those demons back to hell. Yeah. That was creepy. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> it sounded like me for a second. I know. That's what immediately what I thought of. November 2012, six months after they were removed from the house, the children were reunited with their mom. Oh, thank yes. goodness. I know, right? It was the mom's happiest day of her life. Fucking no shit, except for the day that they were born. Yeah. Ugh. DCS checked in on the family until the case closed in February of 2013. So they did Oh, wow. So they kept, they kept tabs on them yeah. for another, like, six months or yeah. so. Mm-hmm. But after that, the family had never had any issues after that. I hope that. they felt a little bit bad. Like, we took these kids when maybe we shouldn't have. I mean, it could have been also good, though, for the mom to figure out what was happening. Yeah. You know, clearing out the house and, you know, because it was getting a lot of, like, the kids were going through a lot of trauma, I feel <laughs> like. So maybe it was a nice refresher, but six months is a very long time. It is. To be away from your mom. But I don't think I would rent a house that I have all these reports of stuff happening like well, they're in reports did they know that ahead of time before i don't they moved know in? i didn't say they probably got a really good deal and was like probably. this is amazing <laughs> we're gonna start a whole new life yeah i'm like can you please have the officer officers stop driving by our house because <laughs> yeah. we're a little freaked Poor out Poor post rosa and family tenants yeah Aww. so ah it's so scary it is scary oh there's all kinds of crazy stuff i'm gonna tell a story about the hat man Okay. That is going to be my next story. I look forward to that. No, because I, I couldn't find any good ones, but I'm going to keep on looking. Okay. Apparently, the hat man is a shadow person. Mm. And no one really knows where shadow people are, but yeah. they're the things that sort of lurk in the corners when also the lights like the are off. the corner of your eye? Yeah. No, you uh, see them out of the corner of your eye a lot. And apparently, there's been, the hat man in particular, there's been a lot of... A lot of people have seen the same thing over, like, the country over the last, you know, 30 years or something Mm -hmm. like that. So, they think it's it's something specific versus the shadow people, which they don't know what they are. They think they're, like, brought forth by people trying to do crazy ceremonies or something like that. But they're just in, they linger in the corners, and then when the lights are off, they are looking at you. So I'll tell a story about that next it's time. It's me. I'm in your corner. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fucking Caitlin. That sounds right. Oh, I'd be like, goodness. hi, Caitlin. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here to pet your dog. <laughs> <laughs> Where's 
couscous. Uh, my goodness. Well, cool. Well, uh, well, I hope you enjoyed that story for your birthday. I did enjoy that and story Halloween. very much. I mean, poor Rosa and family, oh my gosh, of course. Right? It's but terrifying. I'm... Could you imagine like, if I started walking up a wall? Like... I'd be Jeez. like, bitch, well, we have to murder you now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I had, I was, once again, perils of working in the garage yeah. versus the basement. Mm. Um, I went to go out to ship, like, sugar yeah. and ship all the packages that we had to ship. And I pulled a batch of sugar and the biggest fucking spider oh I've ever God. seen in my life, like, sort of just popped onto the table. And it was probably bigger than a 50 cent piece. Wow. I mean, it was significantly That's large. Huge. So I sat there for probably 10 minutes with this, like, package of boxes, like, uh-huh. bound together boxes. So it was, like, sort of a heavy thing uh-huh. in my hand, like, debating on killing it or whether I try to kill it or don't try to kill it. Or try to kill it and miss, and then it comes at me and attacks me. Uh-huh. And, you know, so I, it was a long debate. A I long, long debate. Probably longer than it should have been. And then eventually I just chucked the box, the boxes, <laughs> and I smashed it. Okay. So well, it was fine. Worked. I didn't have to burn the garage to the ground. I thought I was going to have to. Well, when you told that beetle story, I thought of the one where you carried down the sugar from... <gasps> With the spider, yeah. like, right on my face, pretty yeah. much. And you put down the sugar, and all of a sudden there was a giant spider, and you freaked out. Yeah. This was an even bigger spider. Really? Yeah. It was significant. It was even bigger than the one that I found in my apartment a long time ago that was too big to fit up the vacuum, and mm. then... Once I tried to get it with the vacuum, it went down into the couch, mm-hmm. and then I did, in fact, think I was going to well, have to burn the, that story. burn the apartment to the ground. I found it, though. I eventually, yeah. once again, stood there for 10 minutes debating all my moves, right. and then eventually got up the gusto to pull all the pow- couch cushions off uh-huh. and go in and find it. Good for you, girl. And I found it, and I killed it. You think it's as big as that one right there? <gasps> oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You are a slut. (laughs) There's no spider. Oh fuck! There's something up there though. Oh, I guess it's it's like a screw hole. It's a screw hole. (laughs) Kaylin, that was not nice. Sorry, that was so funny though. All right, right. goodbye. I'm not even saying goodbye to everybody. (laughs) Happy birthday, Michelle. No, you can fuck yourself. We hope you had a. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Whatever. <laughs> and if you'd like to follow us on Instagram or Facebook, I should totally be dead right now. Uh, I wish I had ice in this glass so I could rattle it right <laughs> in front of the right. microphone. Uh, well, happy birthday, Michelle! Happy Halloween, everyone! And uh, thank you for listening. Okay, bye. Bye. Uh.